Today we're going to be talking about the Bandai Movie Monster Series Godzilla Ultima Heat Ray version. This figure is unfortunately exclusive to the Godzilla Singular Point Volume 1 Blu-ray Collector's Edition, Fan Edition, whatever edition. And I say unfortunately just because, I, I mean, just look at this thing. It's so beautifully painted. I love the new head sculpt on it, and I really wish that it was more readily available for more people to obtain. Not everybody is really going to be down to be dropping 11,000 or 14,000 yen for five episodes, maybe four episodes of an anime, and a figure. Well, a Bandai movie monster figure, I should say. But good old Shin Rob Jira, the Bandai boy, the boy who Bandai's, could not say no to this thing, even though he, I kind of did say no at one point. But do I regret it? Well, I'm going to spoil the entire of the video by saying no again look at this thing unbridled joy now just to go over this quick we're going to be talking about this guy for the entirety of the video so i'm going to take him out of frame really quick and i just want to show you all the blu-ray the blu-ray box is really really nice we have a nice textured material over here but the minute that you smooth on over godzilla over here it's nice and flat and it feels nice and high quality and it's going to be exactly the same on the other side texture high quality texture high quality this is of course a slip case the real case is right on over here where uh, you can open it and you will get some some promo art for Godzilla Singular Point with Godzilla Ultima gracing the cover in a very deranged look. And on the inside, we will get that legendary mural that appeared in the series, and we will get disc one. Now, I am just absolutely addicted to that lock-in feature that they have with this disc over here. But here is the full painting in all of its glory. Now, yes, I did get the pamphlets for the Singular Point game and the alternate soundtrack download that this version of the Blu-ray comes with, but I'm not going to show that on screen because, I mean, I want it. I don't want nobody taking it for me. <laughs> and we have this very simple and beautiful card cardboard box with Godzilla SP, Godzilla Singular Point, Volume 1 Blu-ray, whatever that says. Nothing on the bottom, nothing on the side, nothing on the other side, bunch of stuff on the back, and then Godzilla SP, Godzilla Singular Point, Volume 1 Blu-ray, don't know what that says, on the top. And there's really nothing crazy going on on the inside. This is where the figure was, this is where the Blu-ray was. Let's move on to the figure. Dear Lord Roger, I'm ovulating as we speak. This thing, oh my god, if the original version didn't command presence on your shelf because of those gigantic drumstick looking thighs, this one absolutely is going to. Aside from the fact that he's got a blue tag, but just look at it, oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> I know, I know, I gotta relax, it's just a vinyl figure, but... That's kind of like my thing, so I'm a little overly excited about this. But before we move on, let's take a closer look at that tag. Not to be anticlimactic or anything, but it really is just the original tag, but blue. I mean, obviously you're going to get all the different text on the inside that says Heat Ray version. But other than that, it is roughly the same tag. Just blue. Now since this lovely gentleman is technically an exclusive, we are going to give him the double sleeve method. He deserves it. Time for this tag to enter a singular point. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's bad. Uh, now this is a Bandai figure, so I'm just gonna get this out of the way now. Nothing in the tail at either piece. The legs can go all the way around like so, as can the arms, and that's it. Nothing else. So essentially the exact same thing as the original. Solid star, arms and legs. Wish the tail was articulate, but the original wasn't, so I really wasn't expecting it. I don't care what anybody says, the detail on the inside of the mouth is immaculate. All the different rows of teeth, those three um, oval looking things at the back of Godzilla's throat, it is all very, very impressive. The detail on the roof of the mouth is even more impressive. Just look at all of that, man. Jeebs. Now one of the major talking points I've seen going on around the fandom is just that they didn't paint his teeth. Now, normally I would kind of make a stink about this, but I'm not going to lie to you guys, I really can't find like the anger within me. I don't think this is such a bad thing. In fact, I really don't think it's all that distracting either. Like, yeah, it is noticeable from certain angles and everything, but a majority of the teeth are smothered in blue paint. Granted, not all of them are. I don't know, I have a hard time getting upset over that. I mean, yeah, they did paint the tusks and like if you're gonna paint those, just paint the teeth, but I don't know, man. I really don't feel like it needed it. And yes, his teeth were still visible and white when he fired off his atomic breath in the show, but I don't know, guys. Should they have been painted? Yeah. Did they need to be painted? I don't think so. By all means, call me Shin, Hip Hoppo, Pitamacrit, Rob Jira, but 
I, I, I don't know. I just don't find it that much of an issue. Now, I've been pretty vocal as of late about limited and exclusive figures receiving a lot more attention when it comes to their paint. So why am I not making a bigger deal about the teeth? Well, again, I kind of just don't care and I don't feel the teeth needed to be painted. And I honestly feel the same way about uh, the fingernails, the claws. I don't mind. Honestly. Yeah, on the real fam, these unpainted claws over here really don't bother me at all. Yeah, it's a little weird that they're not painted, and I can't really say that it's like a lighting issue, just because, well, I feel like a lot more of Godzilla's body would be metallic blue, be that the case. But yeah, for whatever reason, this doesn't bother me. Do I think they should have been painted? Yeah, but I'm not upset about it. I don't know, man. I really don't feel that unpainted claws takes away from everything else that was painted on this figure. The silver on top of the head is very nice just like the original but it's the dry brushing that is present all over the skin clearly this time around we have a different base color for this figure but now it's being highlighted by this shade brighter than gray maybe like a little bit of like an old navyish blue gray kind of thing going on here and it's highlighting all of the bumps and grooves all over godzilla's body and it further brings forth all of the amazing detail that yes is present on the original figure it just wasn't brought out as beautifully as it is being done here like i genuinely just cannot not get over how such a simple addition really made all the difference for this figure. And it's everywhere. It's not one of those heavy paint applications Kiryu or Ghidorah issues. No, the paint is everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. They painted all the way to the semi tip of the tail. Yeah, they didn't hit all the way to the tip of the tail, so. Eh. But guys, gals, non-binary pals, even the bottom of the tail got hit with Paint even Godzilla's crotchal region, moving all the way up into his abs, into his chest, into his neck. It was all hit by this amazing paint, and my god, does it just do everything right for this figure, for this sculpt, for this mold. I sing my praises in the highest of key. And you can still see all the tiny little bits of detail in these dorsal fins over here. Just so whimsically done and brought to a whole new level of awareness with this metallic blue paint that Bandai chose to use. I also just really, really love that since it was sprayed on, you can still kind of see some of like the metallic blue paint kind of sparkling besides the rows of dorsal fins, which is really, really nice. But of course, the amazingness doesn't end there. The main row of dorsal fins are now fully translucent with metallic blue tips and need I say more? Need I say anything? This looks beautiful. It looks amazing. I love it. And I even see little hints of glitter in there. If you look really, really close, yeah, you can see glitter all along the sides over here towards the bottom. Yeah, you can see a little bit more going on over here. I had no idea there was glitter in this thing. Or did I? I forget. But that's the beautiful part about forgetting because then you get to re-experience it on your own and that is just wondrous. Truly, truly wondrous. Over here you can see a little bit more of the spray residue for the metallic blue, which I honestly really do like. I am not pointing this out because I hate it. I love it. I genuinely love it. And just look at them glisten in the light. Glisten, shine, glitter. It's so very, very nice. I would kill for a Godzilla Ultima Bandai vinyl that was just all like this. Kind of like the movie theater exclusive version of Godzilla Phileas. I would love that. And guaranteed, I I am definitely going to be looking at these dorsal fins um, a lot, like a lot, a lot. Long after this video gets published, these are going to be grabbing my attention for a while, long while. I'm only noticing this now, but the yellow used on these eyes, it feels like a more vibrant version of what was used on the standard movie monster series Godzilla Ultima. See what I'm saying? This is definitely a lot more vibrant than these are. These are a little bit on the fadey side, and I like that. That's an interesting difference. I mean, maybe not to everybody, but it's definitely interesting to me. Also, yeah. Size comparison. <laughs> yeah, what that mouth do, Ultima Goji, is going to be a bit on the taller side, solely for his gigantic open mouth. Not much else was changed other than the paint. I mean, I don't see any major differences here, but I don't know. You guys can tell any different. 
Let me know. I know that these were likely made around the same time, but I do wish Bandai fixed this with the tail. I mean, it doesn't look as bad as on the original, but it just looks like the tip of the tail is just still just a little bit too big for the tail itself. You see what I'm saying? See how it kind of like overlaps the rest of it? Same with the spikes, how they just don't match up and overlap. Oh wait, dear God, I think it's actually worse on this version. Hold on. Actually, I don't know. The newer boy kind of looks a little bit less obvious than the original. You see what I'm saying? This one feels a little bit more abrupt. The newer one feels a little bit less abrupt. I mean, it's still abrupt, but... Yeah, I don't know. Granted, I wasn't expecting Bandai to fix this, but they also kind of did. Huh. Now, we all know that this is an entirely new head, and for the most part, the spikes and the fins look mostly the same on this guy. I really can't pinpoint any major differences between them. I mean, clearly there's going to be a little bit more bunching up on the new guy because he has his mouth open, but... I don't know. I can't seem to pinpoint any major changes. But at most, I would say if anything is going to be different, it's more than likely going to be the stuff over here. And it's only going to be a very slight difference. So the unpainted teeth don't bother me. The unpainted claws don't bother me. Everything else that is painted looks amazing. In fact, uh, hold on. <laughs> the toes seem to be mostly painted the exact same way. Mine has a few uh, dings in them unfortunately. But yeah, I'm not seeing anything majorly different with the toes. Oh, the toes are painted a completely different color. All right, wasn't expecting that. That's certainly unexpected, but hey, there you go. Different paint for the toes. And yeah, the unpainted claws still ain't bothering me. Not at all. Yeah, the only major difference between these two would be the head sculpt, the paint, and the fact that this guy's got a bit of a warped leg. That's all. Yeah, I think both paint and detail earned their solid stars long ago. Again, it's just me personally. The teeth don't bother me, the claws don't bother me. I love everything else that this figure does. And even with this lacking paint, it still feels exclusive, it still feels special, and I'm genuinely happy that I have this thing in my collection. I mean, just look at those dorsal fins. Oh. But anyway, that's about going to wrap it up for me, friends and neighbors. Do so hope you enjoyed this video. I want to give a lovely thank you to my patrons who helped fund this purchase. And for everybody else here, patron or not, you should totally check out my social media and my merch page for more Shin Rob Jira-isms. And for any wondering, yeah, I still do love Godzilla Singular Point. I mean, clearly, I loved it enough to spend 11,000 plus yen on four or five episodes in a vinyl figure. Of course I still love it. <laughs> but anyway, see you all on Friday. Thank you all for watching. Have a lovely night and... Dinosaur. Dinosaur. <laughs>